Hi everybody, welcome back to another lesson in my level 3 beginner piano course. In this video we're going to learn OSTEN's Tyrolese Waltz from Opus 61 number 12. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up. Also I offer online piano lessons if you're looking for one there's going to be information below. In the previous lesson we learned about the dotted eighth note or dotted quaver and the relationship between the dotted eighth note and the sixteenth note how they fit into one bead and this very simple piece by Oesten is going to reinforce that concept and use it in the context of an actual piece. So the left hand, as you can see, is mainly playing chords and the right hand is playing a melody with this constant uh, dotted eighth sixteenth pattern. We are in three, four time. Uh, of course, it's a waltz, so it's in three time. One, two, three, one, two, three. We are in the key of C major, so no sharps and no flats. We start on an upbeat and let's do first the left hand and then we're going to have a look at the right hand. So the first chord is a C major chord, five, three, one. I'm going to just block them out first. Then we have a G7 chord, D, F, G. Then a G major chord, B, D, G and back to C major. Then we have a C major again, a G7, and the full G7 chord, and C, E. Now it's really important to block out the chords so you actually feel where the hand position is uh, when you have to move between the chords, and when you did that a few times, we can start adding on the rhythmic pattern. So as you can see, the bottom note has to be held for three beats and the top two notes are going to be played on the second and third beats while the bottom note is being sustained. So, one, two, three, 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 one, two. Since we're in 3-4 time and this is a waltz, we can put a slightly bigger accent on that first note in each bar to give the feel of the dance. But don't push too hard on the fifth finger because we don't want to put any pressure on it, we just want to make sure it stays down while we play these upper two notes. Make sure there's no hesitation between the bars, so nothing like this. So one, two, three, one, two, three. It actually develops finger independence because we need to hold down one finger while we have to move a group of another two. The right hand is having these beautiful slurs that all end on an accented note and interestingly the accented note is on the second beat so contrary to the feel of the waltz where the main accent should be on the first beat the right hand puts the accent on the second beat except for the last two bars. So we have this kind of broken chord pattern. Let's play through the notes just as a broken chord pattern. The first one is G, C, E, so a C major chord, one, three, five. The second one is B, C, D. And then we have G, D, F, one, three, five. And then C, A, G. The second line back to C major. Then B, C, D and the full G7 chord, G, B, D, F. So again, I'm doing this just to kind of settle my hand into the positions as they change quite quickly, and I really understand the hand shape needed for these patterns. So the rhythm is going to be three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and. So the, the dotted eighth note and the sixteenth note have to fit into one beat. And then we have a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. So a lot of dotted rhythms here mixed up. And a very good thing would be to clap the pulse and then start playing the right hand rhythm. Just to really feel where the beats are. So, three, one, two, three, and. So that last note is gonna come on the three, and. And again, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, three,
three and one. And that's the rhythm all the way through. So clap the beat, the pulse with one hand or use a metronome and try to really make sure that the notes fit into the beat, especially the dotted eighth note and the 16th note. There's a tendency to make those much longer and they can easily become a dotted quarter note when it's not. So make a big difference between the second dotted note and the first one. So let's play the entire right hand and we have to lift up after every single slur because we've got very short phrases. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one. Lift, lift, lift. There we go and making sure that those accented notes are nice and strong. Now hands together is gonna to be even harder because the left hand comes on the beat and is sustaining. So when you lift up the right hand, make sure the left hand bottom note is still sustained. Three, one, two, lift. 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 And there we are, that's the end. So a short exercise that looks very simple, but the rhythm actually is not quite so simple, especially when we add in the sustain note and the uh, slurs. So lots of practice to really solidify this rhythm before we go on to more challenging pieces.